It is another episode of Path to Purchase, and I am Tom Breeze, and I'm with Mr. Ollie Bilson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about engagement, uh, getting your prospects and your customers engaged with you as a brand, and making sure they really kind of like take the relationship and and uh, turn it into more customers, more clients for your business. Um, now, Ollie, um, first of all, let's talk about like why engagement. Well, briefly, what is engagement from your perspective and what we're talking about in this particular podcast episode, but then also like why engagement is just so important. Cool. So we, we, we spoke um, previously in, a, in another episode about consumption and, and why um, measuring consumption and um, how we could use certain tactics to increase consumption, especially specifically about free uh, content uh, mm. and, and how we could make people consume stuff um, to, to move them down the funnel. Well, the fact is, is that um, regardless of what type of marketing system or funnel you have, um, one of the, the and, and that could be, before they buy um, or when they get to the first purchase or the second purchase or the third purchase or even um, when there is nowhere else for them to ascend to um, and, the, and there's not another engage, a transaction for them to engage in when they become a client and the journey that they go through as a, as a customer or a member. Um, what we're talking about here is engagement and those specific data points i suppose that you should be aware of that you can right now use um to to really consider are people engaged because if they're not engaged then it's going to be it's going to prove difficult uh, for us um to further and deepen um our relationship with them um and they can also be indicators for people that if you run a uh, an information marketing business or a membership business they could actually fall off and they could indicate that um, somebody isn't going to continue with you in their, uh, in their membership, which is a problem. So um, it's, it's how do we use these data points of engagement to better our messaging, uh, better our um, contingencies um, that, uh, that improve our marketing overall? Cool. Okay. So, so let's say, for example, someone's not engaged. What does that look like? Are they just like not opening emails? Is it that type of thing we're talking about here? Yeah, it most certainly could be. Um, and there is a slight overlap between consumption and engagement. Mm -hmm. The way that um, I sort of determine this is where we can start looking at things like um, if you run a membership site, for example, um, <clears throat> of when was how many times have they logged into the membership site okay how many times have they been in um so really we're looking at that engagement um of that um of the frequency of their their login so um in fact this kind of spews out a whole whole heap of things with engagement and and one of the one of the things that um i like to talk about a lot uh, because it just goddamn works for pretty much all businesses <laughs> rfm um recency frequency and monetary and if, if we just take uh, recency and frequency just as two things that we can base engagement on um we can really really start to understand where we can begin to use that within our marketing it, virtually every every point really so mm -hmm. with a membership site it could be number of logins um, so that's frequency it could be the last login which is more uh, recency of course and um, <clears throat> it could be something like how many of you're doing a weekly blog email how much how long did they stay on the page for Mm. Okay. So these are slight metrics uh, that really begin for us to measure engagement more accurately. So if you're sending people to a blog article, a lot of people spend a lot of time on their content. How much time did they spend on the page? Now, before we go any deeper, like data's great, 
but obviously if you're not going to use it um then there's two schools of thought you might be thinking this is super advanced i don't really know how i'm going to start with this the fact is is that if you can begin to set up a, an automated system to manage manage some of this engagement for you you might not act on this data right away you might decide to um, you know you, you just don't have the bandwidth to consider some of these contingencies and how you might bake them into your marketing but the important thing is that you actually do something with it and so you have to figure out what's relevant for your business. Um, you know, I'll yep. put an example there of a, a subscription or membership business. Factually, if you're not measuring how many times somebody's logged in, that's a problem. If mm -hmm. you're not measuring how many subscription cycles they've been through, that's a problem. You're not measuring how many, much of the content within uh, the, uh, the membership site they're watching that's a problem. So you have to think about these things, what's meaningful to me and my business. And so, you know, you've got to consider it. And, and so also in terms of engagement, um, you want to look at things like, it, it, or even through your marketing, how many lead magnets have they downloaded? If you've got more than one lead magnet on your website, or you've got offers that you put out to your list, how many of those reports have they downloaded? Um, mm. What are those consecutive actions that somebody's taken? Um, because armed with this information about engagement, these metrics, we can then be proactive. Um, so, you know, engagement might be a good, uh, referrals might be a good sign of engagement management. So if they're still engaged with you, they're more likely to refer you to other people. Why don't you start measuring how many referrals they've given? It's another indicator. It's another metric for you to consider. What do we do about that? Um, mm. You know, and, and it could just be as basic as um, how many web forms have they filled in? And you can begin to determine whether or not you build up a lead score, you know, of all these people that are taking these different actions. Uh, and, and as they begin to increase their engagement with you, suddenly you begin to think, hey, you know what? Now they're doing this, maybe I should reach out with a telephone call. Or maybe I should just send a one-off email that just says, hey, I noticed that you've been opening, clicking around the website, spending some time watching the blog, or reading the blog, watching the video. How can I help? you you know and that's not going out to everybody that's just going out to that one person when they reach a particular threshold so you know thinking about this and and in a way i'm probably probing and pushing and prodding on more advanced uh, level of um of marketing when we're talking about this but it should broaden your mind if you're listening to this um to to how you can consider this in your business Cool. Okay. I love this because it's like you, it's sometimes the hidden metrics that can be kind of like opened up to you and you can just display them and see them straight away. And I, and I love the idea of like automating some of that process as well. So should someone um, be displaying that there are kind of like, um, like kind of going to a particular website and logging in frequently um, and the last time I logged in was very recent as well. And they're kind of like, so you know, they're really engaged in what your content is about as you quite rightly say, like if you could attribute some sort of lead score, to, they, as soon as they hit this particular number of lead score or this level of heat of lead score or something like that, then that triggers this new email that goes out to them. It's like a bespoke email outside of the normal kind of like follow-up sequence or whatever it might be. I love the idea of like having that in place because then you know all of the people that are displaying a lot of intent to be consuming your content and loving what you do, you could then send them like a particular type of qualific like qualification email, so to speak, to be like, okay, great. It looks like you're absolutely loving the content. Um, what would you say about to other people who are thinking about buying this product or something on those lines? Because if they're really loving it, the chances are by sending out that email at that timely point, they're probably going to give you a rave review, for example, right. and click on um, uh, your website. Or maybe you could say, hey, look, we've seen that you're kind of like loving this content so far, which is great news. Um, would you be interested in our VIP program or our consultancy or our, whatever it is might be the next step, the next logical upset, upsell? You're reaching people at the right time with the right message is really what you're saying. 
Um, yeah, precisely, yeah. And of course it's based on their interaction with you. So mm. no longer does it seem more automated, although it could be. Um, it, it, it plays on, on their, um, their, the, the, how progressive they're being with, with their, you know, in their intent over finding out more information. Um, yeah. And this goes, you know, a, a lot deeper than this to actually give you really meaningful information, really kind of the real nuts and bolts of marketing information that you need to make better decisions. So, you know, for us, it could be, um, let me think, something like time-based. So it could be time from when they opted in to scheduling a call. Yep. It could also then be the time from scheduling that call to actually making the first purchase. So again, it's giving you those little micro insights into where people are and how engaged they are based on their activities. Yeah. Um, and similarly, if you're in a business that's going to rely upon repeat transaction, meaning you might not make um, a great deal of money off the first transaction and you thrive off the lifetime value of somebody, then the thing that you need to measure, of course, is time from their first purchase to their second purchase. And so if within a tolerance or a time period they don't engage in that second purchase, what are you going to do about it? Mm. So now knowing that that engagement level has dropped, you can then consider, well, well, they've engaged in one transaction, but within a given time period, they haven't engaged in a second. Let's like reach out to them. Let's do something like you were just saying. Um, yeah. Proactive. Um, and, and it, you know, it, this stuff is the stuff that makes, for me anyway, the world go around. <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. Because I imagine like, um, so running an agency myself, um, one thing that um, we've used in the past, and we, we still use it to a certain extent, we don't use it quite as much as we used to, is like to have like a member hub where we do like a uh, client can log in and we do, like, do like bespoke videos we've done for them, updates, anything that kind of like was important to share with them. Not only would you send it out straight by email, but we'd also have like a whole history of it inside the member hub as well for them. Um, and we found that the vast majority of people just as much easier just to email them straight off with the content straight away there have it anyway but didn't really kind of it didn't need access to all the information all the time um but i like the idea of like creating some sort of tool that's like a, almost like a reporting tool of some sort and this could go for any business that's why i'm talking about it um if you have like high-end customers who are using um a login to check on progress or whatever it might be and it's like there's a level of transparency within this tool so they they want to go and consume it all the time if they're hitting up all the time and checking out and like wanting to find out all the information i love the idea then of being like okay look if, if you're constantly logging in maybe you're appropriate for our next like product for example right. or maybe um you would like a, a dedicated manager to be like on the call for you at any time and it just costs this much per month for example, yeah. uh, or whatever you might want at that point. It's kind of like, it could be um, like a new strategy call to be like, hey, look, we've done really well in this po uh, place, but let's think about the next three months and let's talk about like what we should be focusing on for the following three months. Could we build another funnel? Could there be a referral to a different agency on, on a slight cross-sell? Could there be, um, like there's so much opportunity there if you know people are really engaged. Whereas if like they don't really listen to you that often, they're just paying their bill and they're getting on with it and they're liking it, but they're not fully engaged, not to say that's a problem, but it just means that probably not that your sales message is going to fall on deaf ears probably at that point. Right. Um, right. And if you had that level of engagement and then be like, oh, look, because we're in communication right now, maybe this is going to be appropriate for you. It's like a classic email that goes out, which is like, are you still interested in this? If you send that to your list, you're going to get a lot of people saying, yeah, and then you can make a lot of sales. But it's not even sending out the email. You can notice what they're doing. And as a result, pitch time, which I love the idea of that because I'm all very much about like not pushing a message, but like, when it's right for someone putting the message in front of them. Of and course, yeah. yeah. It's a really clever strategy. I love that. Yeah, and I think, you know, for us, we use this all the time in lots of different businesses. And it's the little hinges that swing big doors, really. Um, and so, you know, looking at you know, the time since their last purchase, um, the time since their last click, uh, the time since their last login, um, the the time even since their last inbound call, 
you know they're all indicators of of engagement um, and um, and allow you to do some pretty clever stuff one of the things that I wanted to um, give somebody that was um, more of a, a an overview of the way we, we because a lot of this stuff is, is often set up in a bespoke nature to pretty much every different business we work with um, but what I wanted to do was give somebody something that they could go away with that would be applicable to literally everybody mm. um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about how we track engagement within emails and um, We've kind of got a, um, a seven um, steps to this process, really, um, in order to make uh, this right and uh, work for pretty much everybody that's doing any kind of email marketing or has a, a database of, of people. Um, and, and the first is, is to consider who is actually engaged on the list. Now, we use a tool to do this with, so this isn't something that you can go and necessarily get off the shelf, but something that you can build within this framework yourself quite easily within most email autoresponders. So the first thing we do is we consider who, on our list out of everybody, who is engaged. Yeah. Um, so what, what does that mean? Well, that means that in the last 30 days, they've opened or they've clicked an email. Pretty yeah. simple. Okay? So that's who do we consider to be engaged. The second is who, um, who has not engaged in uh, over 30 days. So, you know, they're, they're people that, that, that don't fall within that 30-day window. They fall outside of that 30-day window from 30 days to 60 days. So they're people that, you know, within um, 30, 60 days have not engaged, okay? In exactly the same frame. Have they not opened? Have they not um, uh, clicked, etc. Then, who are the people that fall between 60 to 90 days? Okay? Yep. Um, again, consider that. So now we're bucketing up. If we've got a list of 10,000 people, we've got 2,000 people that are engaged. You know, we've got so many people that are between 30 to 60, 60 to 90, and then 90 and above. Now, the 90 and above are a dangerous place to be because, of course, you can then start thinking, okay, I've got a bucket of people here that literally are not opening emails. They're not engaged. What do I need to do to get them re-engaged? And so we have a re-engagement campaign that we send to people, which is usually a high value premium type offer to get them to the point where, you know, this should, with the subject line, with the nature of the offer, get them to click, open, whatever. Whatever it is, we want to know um, if we can get them back engaged. And if yeah. we can't, and if they do, then they fall back into the, the, the uh, yeah, engaged category. And if they don't, then they stay where they are. And if they stay where they are for, for a period of time, we get rid of them. Right, okay. Get people off our list, which is not what a lot of people speak about, but those people are, are dangerous to you because they skew all of your numbers. They skew your open rates. They skew your engagement rates. And so that bucket of people, you know, you can actually tell them, hey, quite frankly, I've sent you a number of emails over quite some time and I noticed that you just haven't been opening or clicking them. Therefore, I must assume that this is like a delinquent account, you don't check it, or you're just not interested in what I've got to send anymore. Therefore, I'm, not go I'm going to unsubscribe you myself um, and um, you can always get back on our list by going here, but until that time, I'm just not going to... Uh, continue to uh, bombard you with emails if I yeah, don't sense. reading yeah. them. Um, so, so once we've gone through that process and we've established those, there's another section. Uh, the other section is they never engaged with us. So these are people that got on our list, but if you'd have listened to the previous uh, podcast, are those that got on our list, but they never consumed anything. Okay, and through yep. our engagement tracking, they've never actually done anything. 
So they never clicked, they never opened, they opted in for the free report, they opted in for the checklist, and they never opened anything. Okay? Yeah. So these are the people that never opened anything. You want to get those people off your list. Pretty yeah, cool, right? makes a lot of sense, yeah. And then the other, the other bucket of people are people that um, are new on our list, but not yet engaged. Now, this might be where you, you, know, you set up some new advertising from a different lead source or a different ad set or a different campaign, um, and you're doing something new with your advertising. What you want to know is that you might be getting leads, but who are new that haven't yet engaged? So these are people that haven't obviously consumed stuff either. So. Yeah. This is a big, big thing because some lead sources lend themselves extremely well for lead generation, but actually don't lend themselves very well in terms of the, your offer, your promise, whatever it is, or the market to actually engage. They're just not engaging with it, right? They were interested in it, but for whatever reason, they're not interested in actually engaging with you uh, and consuming what you you know you wanted to give them. It's an interesting so, point because I think that like if you're sending a lot of traffic from a new source of traffic or a new targeting option, whilst the lead generation costs might be low per lead, so low cost per lead, um, instead of waiting to see if they actually convert to a sale, like maybe it's like 15 to 30 days later, for example, you've got to get that data much earlier to be like, well, look, they're not going to convert because they're not even looking at the content we're sending out for free. Um, right. So like you might get like a dollar lead, for example, but whilst that lead cost is, is low, they're never going to buy anyway. So it's just kind of like a low quality lead as well as a sure. cheap lead. Um, and some, I mean, I know that I've had this conversation with clients where from YouTube, you tend to get like a, people that have watched a video, it tends to be search traffic as well. So you get like really high quality search traffic who have also watched a video all the way through and then decided to convert onto their list. That audience has typically qualified itself so much more effectively than just like an image ad from a Google right. ad or a Facebook ad, for example. Yeah. Um, and so you tend to find that, well, from, I definitely do, when I work with a client on cost per acquisition front, they end up like happy to spend more money per lead with me because they know that the cost is that much um, more expensive. Typically, it can be a little bit more expensive than Facebook, but the engagement rates are much higher, the sales rates are much higher. And so just that the value, I skew the data in terms of like the value per lead. Um, and um, so but that's just a, I just thought it was an interesting thing to, to talk about. It's like, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I think for me, um, also depends on the modality. I mean, it depends on the media because, you know, again, we, we spoke a lot, well, I spoke a bit about mobile marketing and, and how that's playing a part now with, delivering your message to people's mobile phones rather than sending them to email and things. Um, you know, just the same way as um, if what you have to offer means that they have to consume it or engage with it offline, mm -hmm. then, you know, you need to consider that because it might well be where you're advertising, you might be getting leads, but they're just not engaging with it because it's not their preferred way of engaging with it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you need to consider that. So for me, the big question for people that are kind of that, that, that well, the, the thing to do if you're listening to this is to consider then. Okay, if these people fit into these different categories on my list. Um, what the hell do I do to 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 do something with them? Well, we we've offered up a strategy there for people that you're going to ultimately send them. The by the way, we're closing the your account basically you know we're closing uh, your email um, but you can get back on the list if you want um, we we need to carefully consider those people that are new on the list but not engaging you need to look at the reason why um, but also you can use things like remarketing here very effectively by uploading that list of people that are not engaged or not not actually doing anything to a Facebook audience and then put together a, a, a put them on a list to get them re-engaged again and just use a different modality of um, getting them um, excited again um, yeah. which is a is a very good way of doing that now none of the stuff that I've spoke about in terms of email addresses things like soft bounces hard bounces non-marketable emails or 
that we never have, have, have done any delivery because you might be getting leads, but of course the quality of the email addresses might be bouncing or whatever it is. So again, that from a list hygiene perspective is another consideration, but, but these are the things with an active list everybody should be doing. Even if you've got a small, small, small list, imagine what it would be like to see your list in all of its glory with seven these seven sections there showing you exactly where people are you would immediately yeah. make some decisions on what you should or could do to re-engage them uh, based on um, based on um, that information it's really interesting and i think if people were to categorize their, their email lists by that there's so many other things that I'm thinking from an advertising perspective, like if you use that to build a custom audience, for example, you're probably going to get a higher quality list. Uh, if you know these people are actually engaging with your content, because you know that that fits into a certain type of avatar that will probably more engage and could get more customers for you as well. Um, but I love the fact that like, based on how people are interacting with you as a brand or a company or, or a business, I love the fact that like, if they're not like engaging the way that you have planned, there's contingency, play, contingency plans in place um, to try and get them to, to engage further. Um, but if not, and they're not, they're not going to engage, you can clean that list, get rid of those people. Uh, because you know that you've got a much higher quality list, you're probably, your probably email delivery rates are going to get better. The chance of you getting higher delivery rates is going to be stronger. Like You won't get penalized from like sending out lots of spam, so to speak, in like someone like Infusionsoft's eyes. For example, and I, and I imagine like everything just runs a lot smoother if you can just start cleaning that list and then knowing how to interact with that audience as well. Mm -hmm. And um, and especially with that, I love that lead scoring idea as well. Should they be interacting, let's offer something that's going to be relevant and appropriate for those people as well, uh, which I think is very clever. Yeah, I mean, the beauty with this is that this can be set up as an automated system inside mm most platforms that you have so that you can automatically re-engage those people that are falling off. Uh, you can purge those people off your list that are not interested or not engaged so it doesn't skew things, doesn't hamper your deliverability. And the thing that a lot of people don't know is that um, email providers like Gmail actually measure uh, and monitor your engagement and that will help your deliverability, it will create less spam and you'll be more trusted in the inbox um, if what you're sending is to people that are actually engaged because it's getting much higher opens uh, than it would do otherwise. Ollie, um, fantastic episode as always. Um, I love that engagement one. That's great. I'm going to be using some of that stuff straight away. Um, cool, cool. Thank you very much and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next podcast episode. Thanks, Tom. Speak soon. 